wasn't Leo, that was R Terry, sorry. <laughs> I've been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next item, please. Moving down to 3.1, we have the draft regional and corporate services committee meeting minutes of September 9th, 2020. Move, support. Moved by, I should say, Director Stobart instead of first name, shouldn't I? Sorry about that, everyone. Seconded by Director Dickey. All in favor? Any opposed? None carried. Next item. Next is 4.1.1. We have update on provincial solid waste initiatives. There is a motion for your consideration and I will just draw the committee's attention to the fact that when uh, the agenda was already prepared, uh, the federal government came out with um, an announcement regarding single use plastics. I'm not sure if Mr. Benton is on the line and would like to speak to the report and to that new announcement. Mr. Benton, are you, are you uh, online? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. Um, yes, through the, uh, through the chair, to the board, and um, to the committee. Um, just to let you know that the federal position was announced last Wednesday, um, and that is uh, with the intention to um, bring into position, um, potentially by the end of 2021, a federal ban for single use plastics. Um, specifically, we are talking about six um, um, single use plastics, plastic checkout bags, six, um, six pack rings, food service wear, straws, and cutlery. Um, they also intend to adopt a target of a 50% recycling uh, content target by 2030. Um, and also, yeah. they are. We're just having trouble understand, un uh, understanding. It's a little, it's kind of like you're underwater there a little bit. Is everybody else? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Is there okay. any way to. So let me just see if I can um, take these off. Is it possible, um, Jamie, for you to come upstairs and uh, and speak to the committee directly? Would that be a possibility? Are you actually in the office? I am in the office, yeah. I'll, I'll come straight up. Okay, thank you. Sorry for the delay, everyone. I'll just... Um... Yeah, that was very hard to understand. It was very hard to understand. Okay. We could move down to the next item while we're waiting or, no, we'll wait, okay. Um, Director Popoff doesn't have a closed. Oh, uh, sorry. There he is, that was quick, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, so the uh, federal announcement was released last Wednesday, and in that they have prepared or proposed to ban um, six single-use plastics by potentially the end of 2021. Um, they are also seeking feedback um, through an intentions paper. So I'm a little out of breath. <laughs> um, and uh, that deadline is December the 9th. So the intention is to bring forth another memo next month with more information in there. Um, but it is particularly good news. It doesn't impact the provincial announcement. So um, the province is still intending to go ahead with uh, their ban on single use plastics. And um, likewise, it doesn't impact any responses that the municipality has put forward. Um, and I have spoken to the city of Chilliwack and have some hot springs in terms of their intentions with that, so it's all quite good news. It is, great, thank you for that. Are there any questions or comments? Director Pryor? Director Engar? Okay. Um, just want to add, uh, add to the conversation only that um, th we were working with a pilot project of agricultural plastics, and the last time that a shipment was made, it did not go to recycling, it ended up in landfill is there any way we can um bring that discussion 
uh, about as well through this process? Thank you. Uh, through the chair to, um, but absolutely. Um, there's the, the discussion paper at the moment and we can um, definitely put forward agricultural plastics as something that should come under a potential EPR, um, Extended Producer Responsibility Scheme. Um, I know that that has been um, raised in the past and so that along with several other um, issues, we can definitely raise. Thank you for bringing that up, Director Pranger. It's really important, especially in our region. There's, there's tons and tons of agricultural plastics that, that should be recycled. And um, I think that's a, a big part of our industry, but also I think a, a responsibility to have them recycled. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, Director Angar. Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, yeah, I'm very pleased to see the, uh, the headway that the province is making and uh, never soon enough, but uh, good to see. Extended producer responsibility programs. I notice uh, in the report that staff is, uh, is in the process or already have made comments to the province in support of some of the other items that their province is suggesting we add to that list of extended producer responsibilities. Um, could you please describe where we are with that? And I, I fully support uh, the staff in uh, making those comments back to the province that we want to see all these items included. Sorry, Chair, through you to uh, staff, if I could have some idea of, uh, of where things are at with the comments back to the province. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Benton? Yep, through the Chair to Director Enger. Um, we haven't so far um, submitted any comments. We are working with our municipality um, staff members to make sure that we get everyone's comments together and in some cases they are submitting their own um, and uh, we will make sure that we uh, bring that back in, in terms of uh, if there's any comments that you would like to make in terms of other potential materials um, but it's pretty broad and we have a, a long list of uh, potential um, materials that should be added in the future. Um, everything's changing all the time with wearables and electronics and so we want to make sure that that, that gets uh, taken into account. Thank you. Thank you. If I may, a follow-up, Chair? Sure. Is there um, uh, a process for any other, any, any, uh, is it just the FBRD that is going to be commenting on I mean, all the other regional districts as well or is this a public sort of solicitation for comments from the province? I will have to uh, get back to you on that. I believe it's been opened up to uh, local governments, um, but it might be open to the industry uh, as well as the members of the public. I have to check, check on that. I'd appreciate it if we could have a, a clear view on that. Uh, if, if it is available to the public, I know lots of keen, uh, keen folks in my area would love to participate. So uh, I'll look for your email. Is that appropriate? Yeah, that's, a, that's appropriate. Just to let you know, when they did release the discussion paper, on uh, plastics last year, they received over 36,000 comments. So it's one of the wow. biggest responses they had. So um, I'm sure that they will um, look for further comments. So you'll notify us then when, uh, if there is a link that we can pass around. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Lou? Anyone else? Director Lou? Lou? Yes, thank you so much. I'm very pleased to see this coming forward and I was noting the comment as well in the report about uh, staff looking for potential funding sources for education and engagement. And I think that that's really such an important piece as this continues to change. The thing that I'm hearing is that people are confused about, you know, what to separate and what's, you know, what can be returned and all these other things. And I think people really want to do the right thing, but we just need to make sure that they understand what it is that they should be doing. And I think also to the, um, to the comment of things going to the landfill, I've heard several people in the last number of weeks that live in multifamily um, situations, especially um, that have been, you know, they have more time on their hands. They're watching their garbage being picked up and so forth. And um, two different people who live in entirely different areas have commented that, you know, they work really hard to separate and to return and do all the things they should, but that some of the haulers are telling them that uh, it all just goes to the same landfill anyway, so there's not really much point. So there may also be just an, a 
you know, maybe appropriate just to follow up, um, you know, with the various haulers in the various areas and just make sure that, um, you know, that the drivers as well are up to speed on, on what's happening because they might get questions from people at the curbside and we want to make sure they're getting the right information. Yeah, good point. Thank you. Anyone else? No? All right. Do we have a motion? Yes, we do. Anyone wish to move the motion? Moved by Director Pranger, second by Director Popoff. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Looks like none. Carried. Next item, please. Next is 4.2.1. We have the Outdoor Learning Program in Thompson Regional Park. This is an information item, but we do have staff on the line that can answer any questions that you might have about this new use in one of our regional parks. Uh, Madam Chair, Director Angar here. Go ahead, Director Angar. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a little background. I, I was speaking with these folks some months back and uh, pretty keen on, uh, on what they're trying to do. Uh, the outdoor learning, uh, I think, is a good experience for young kids and having grown up in the cedar trees in West Vancouver and next to a stream, I think we can all benefit from more time in nature. Some of the, my concerns that uh, I noticed that have been addressed by staff, which is excellent, which are excellent, is the uh, need for their liability insurance. And uh, I've also mentioned to the, uh, the teachers that are gonna be running this course, this organization, uh, that, that we do have cougars in the area there, frequently at Thompson Park, and uh, they, they took that in. So just wanted to make sure that all the kids are gonna be very safe. And uh, of course the COVID-19 protocols, I also asked them to uh, make sure that they had that in place which I understand how they have, uh, seeing staff's report. Um, the other question I have is the extra cost to the community. This is a regional park and uh, the impacts on the uh, usage of toilets and things like that and making sure they're sanitary for the young ones. Um, I wanted to make sure that, uh, that, uh, that the community is not going to be saddled with unnecessary expenses, but uh, somehow find a way to move forward. Any feedback on that for me? Uh, through the chair to do Director Engar, uh, this is a regional park, so any expenses are always absorbed regionally, but we do have Christina Vugtaveen on the line if uh, she would like to comment on that. Thank you for your comments through the chair. Um, to Director Engar, um, we are continuing to work with the group around that. Our par park safety plan, um, as we have it, as it pertains to COVID-19, does not allow for us to do extra cleaning before, during, after um, any sort of events, which would be inclusive of this particular um, group. So they are um, on their own. So we do our regular cleaning um, as COVID style, and there will not be extra cleaning. So from a staffing perspective, there are no other additional expenses um, as it pertains to this. Um, yes, there's some a little bit more use than perhaps there might be during a regular um, day. However, um, it's not a significant increase that we would anticipate any additional costs. Very good, thank you. Anyone else? No, okay, moving on to the next item. Next is 4.2.2. We have developing a policy for classification of regional versus community parks and trails. There is a motion for your consideration and I understand that David Urban is on the line to answer any questions that you may have. Anyone with any questions, comments, or care to make the motion? Sue, so, I'll move and I have a comment. All right, do we have a seconder? Director Dickey? Okay, Director Ballou, you have a comment? Yes, thank you. Uh, just to the point of actually having policies around these things, as things change and as we better understand how funding might flow, ensuring that these policies are in place, I know is, is a lot of uh, work and background to do, but I think it's so important and then everyone's clear about what happens and, and what the classifications are. So thanks very much to staff for all the work on bringing this forward. Thank you. Anyone else? 
Stobart? Oh, sorry, Dr. Stobart. Yeah, through, through the chair staff, just curious if there is any um, any available background information on, uh, on the parks that we have to date on how it was decided whether they were regional or, uh, or community. Uh, yes, through the chair to Director Stobart. Um, we've done a little bit of looking into the back history, but not an extensive exercise. Uh, I was referring back to our original regional parks plan that was done in uh, the early 2000s, and that provided the guidance at the time for the majority of the regional parks. Uh, what we've seen recently is a lot more community parks come online, and uh, they are more the direction of the electoral area. So it's been a, a combination of regional and community, but there's no clear direction on exactly why is one, one type and one the other. So that's the point of this policy. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I'll call the question, all in favor? Is anyone opposed? Okay, motion's carried. Moving down to reports by directors, Madam Chair. Reports by anyone? All right. Next item, we have public question period for items relevant to the agenda. Uh, as you know, we have, uh, under the COVID-19 um, period of time, we have been accepting email submissions uh, before the board meeting. Uh, at this point, I think I can confirm that we did not receive any email submissions for this meeting. Um, Ms. Riley, do we have anyone on the line, members of the public that are wishing to speak today? I can confirm that we have nobody on Zoom or on the phone that are wishing to ask a question today. So moving down to item nine, we're looking for a resolution to close the meeting. So moved. Move. Do we have a seconder? Seconded by Director Popoff. All in favor? None opposed? Motion's carried. And you could just give us about two minutes to get the uh, Zoom recording to stop and we'll just clear the